Hello, Penn Staters, and thank you for joining us for the Alumni Association's first ever virtual We Are Weekend. We Are Weekend is presented by the association and sponsored by the Pocono Mountains Visitor Bureau. I'm Lauren Dempsey, a 2020 Penn State graduate, and I'm also part of the Alumni Association's Young Alumni Ambassador Program. I'm thrilled to host tonight's virtual family paint night, and together we're going to have lots of fun. As a heads up, tonight's event is being recorded. State College artist Jackie Gianco will take you through step-by-step -step process to create your own painting featuring the old main bell tower. Once you finish your painting, be sure to tag the Alumni Association on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram with a picture of your painting, Paint Night. Jackie is the Associate Director of Academics and Associate Teaching Professor of Applied Linguistic at Penn State's in Intensive English Communications Program. Notably, she's also an incredibly talented artist. She's hosted previous events with the Alumni Associations and helps Penn Staters create their blue and white masterpieces. We're encouraging you to participate in the chat box to share what year you've graduated and what your how many classes and years the states and our representative if, with, with this We Are event. You can also share your opinions and comments in, in the comments section, which will be moderated by us. If you want to rewatch this tour or know how your family and friends are turning in now, you can watch the archived version of this video within the virtual attendee hub for the We Are Weekend. Lastly, closed captions are available and we will be sharing a link in this chat. We hope you're enjoying the events and have plenty of fun where the weeks we'll be exploring for everything for everyone to enjoy. We Are Weekend is now kicking off and now it's time to bring out the artists and our virtual family paint night. Take it away, Jackie. Thank you so much for that introduction. And um, we can go ahead and spotlight the canvas now for everyone. So I wanna uh, thank, thank uh, the Alumni Association for bringing me back. Um, I, I'm really excited to be doing this painting with everyone. And I'm just wondering about the folks out there who have been with me through the, we did a kitty cat on a pumpkin for Halloween. There was a mason jar of daisies. So um, I'm, I'm hoping that you guys have rejoined me and maybe there's some first timers out there as well. Um, we're happy to have everyone. And I can just go over what my setup is here in case you guys are also preparing um, for our little uh, Penn State sunset. I've got my canvas, of course. I've got all my paints um, laid out on my very fancy um, palette here. So we are using uh, white, black, and the three primary colors, yellow, red, and blue. Maybe you have purple paint, maybe you have green paint, and that's totally cool. Um, I'll just be working with the basics here and showing you step-by-step step, um, how we're gonna achieve these, these different colors. I also have um, my uh, big, I, technical term, big brush, big brush, little brush. Um, those are the two that I typically paint with. Um, big brush for getting sort of big, big strokes, lots of color on the canvas, smaller for some more details. And if you, if you have a liner brush, um, they're good to have around. You don't, you don't need the liner brush, but um, anytime you do lettering, it might be good to have that. And another option for the lettering where it says dear old state is to get one of those, you know, like paint markers once, once all of this dries. I've got paper towel at the ready. I've got a mug of water. Um, I learned the hard way that a mug of water is better than a plastic cup uh, because I will knock that over quite easily. Anyway, um, and I have a bottle of water to drink and hopefully you are enjoying whatever beverage uh, of your choice right now. So to, to get this sunset sky, we're going to start from the top and work our way down. And I'll say this probably many times during our, our little painting adventure is that you really can't go wrong with that sky. We're gonna be using gorgeous colors. And as long as you get the colors that you like, um, any, any silhouette that we put on top of it is just gonna look really beautiful. So don't, 
Don't stress if yours does not look like the original. Don't, don't stress if yours doesn't look like what I'm painting. Mine won't even look like this. Um, but yeah, with a silhouette painting, we really can't go wrong, okay? So first thing I'm gonna do, <coughs> excuse me. First thing I'm gonna do is um, with my big brush, I'm going to dip into the blue paint and I'm gonna start building up the areas that are at the top. They're gonna stay bright blue for the moment and we can add our black later. So I'm just gonna go back and forth with a horizontal stroke here, all right? And I'm using the full width of those bristles on that canvas, right? I'm not holding my brush um, with the bristles uh, horizontal and holding them vertically. So I get the full, the full effect, the full impact of that brush. And I'm gonna do my best to um, keep things moving, but also try not to rush too much. Um, I do have a tendency to go fast. So please do not hesitate in um, uh, saying something in the chat or asking a question. Usually it's slow down. So I will do my best here. Now, hey, um, Jackie, before you go any further, um, sure. I'm getting a notice that your bandwidth is low on the canvas. And I'm wondering if you're using the same internet for both um, feeds that you have on right now. All right, so what we can, what I can do, I do see that I'm, I can try to just use my phone. So let me. If you're on the same Wi-Fi network, it might even help if you just turn your camera off that's just pointed on you. Right. right, right you can right. stay logged into the Zoom, but just turn the camera off, that can help. All right, how, did, how is my, is the audio okay like this? Um, it was a little bit better on the other one, but. Um, yeah, <laughs> okay, hold on. <laughs> Let me. All right, so can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I Let's try this, and if we have oh any other issues, I'll let you know, but we, we can try this for now. So that's interesting. Oh, it's because my laptop's muted. Okay. All right. Can you, can you say hi to me so I can see if I hear you? <laughs> can you hear us? Okay, perfect. Okay. So, all right. Still says I'm low here. So, well, we'll see. We'll see how we go. Yeah. Nothing major has happened yet, right? No. All right. Um, so with this blue strip, I've been keeping it pretty, pretty tidy and, and straight across, but um, I'm going to start kind of playing with, um, you know, different kind of levels and streaky lines. Let me bring this up forward. Ooh. So there's lots of interesting streaks and marks going on here. So I'm going to kind of bring down this blue where wherever I want it to be, honestly, this is my painting. So wherever you want that blue to be, um, go ahead and mark it out now. We're gonna work around it with our other, our other colors later. So wherever you want this, this blue to be. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. All right, I don't have the bandwidth message anymore. Maybe that's maybe that's good. Yeah, it looks good. And Jackie, just so you know, you've got people tuning in from all over the U.S. Some in Philly, Ann Arbor, some oh, here in wonderful. State College. Um, and we wonderful. also have some that are um, Joyce and Teresa. Uh, this is their third paint with you. Oh, so we've got wonderful! Some yeah. Oh, thank you so much. That's wonderful. All right, 
So have fun with this, right? I mean, this is, this is a, again, um, you really can't go wrong. This is what I would call a really forgiving painting. Um, just have fun with those colors. As long as you have bright, you know, beautiful, whatever you like colors in our background, that silhouette on top is just gonna look gorgeous. So that's, that's my blue. And what I can do now is um, take advantage of the blue I have in my brush right now and um, start working on a purple, okay? So I like kind of moving in, in a logical order so I don't have to wash my brush all the time. So I've got this blue paint on the brush. I can keep that there, don't need to, don't need to clean it at all. And I can just tap into some red on my fancy palette here. And I can smoosh that around in the plate. Again, technical terms here only people. Um, and I'm just gonna start working up a purple that I like. Maybe you have purple paint already. Um, so you can go ahead and use that. It's also fun to kind of play with different kinds of purple. Maybe you wanna add more blue. Maybe you wanna add more red. Maybe you wanna add white, okay? And I'm just going to start streaking this purple wherever I want it. So I, I tend to have it a lot here on the right-hand side and there's a lighter purple, purple on the left here. But this is kind of the general idea. And don't be afraid of kind of blending and smudging in with the blue that's already there. Let me put this sketch down for a moment. So um, you might notice that I've kind of switched my, my um, technique on holding the brush. Now I'm holding the brush so the bristles are horizontal. And this is going to help um, get me to be. Um, what am I trying to say? Uh, I have more control, that's it. I have more control about where this purple is going. So now I can kind of play with the blue that's already there. And I'm just going back and forth. It's not perfectly straight or horizontal now. I'm just kind of rocking. I can do it in slow-mo. There's, it's kind of rocking back and forth. And I'm just going to move this purple around again wherever I want it to go. I always try to copy the original as best I can. Um, if you're like me right now and you're getting kind of scratchy on your canvas, um, and you're seeing the texture of the canvas um, come through, um, that means that you just, you don't have enough paint on your brush, okay? So maybe I can show this better if I bring it closer. So what we're seeing now is kind of a sketchy, scratchy effect on the canvas. And that means that I just, I don't have as much paint on the brush. So, um, Maybe you like it, maybe that's what you want, but if you don't want that, just grab more pigment, put more of that paint on your brush. And at this point, maybe your blue is dry and you're like, hey, I wanna be more blendy with that blue, what's going on? Go ahead, grab more blue and kind of give it a refresh. Okay. We got some purple down there. I also have some light, some of this light purple coming in on the left. So to get that look, I'm going to add some white to the purple I have. So here's my little purple smudge area. I'm just gonna grab a little bit of white here and smudge it. And that looks a little bit more blue than I want. So I'll just grab a little red, add it to the mix. Uh, I think that's about right. I don't know. Grab some more white just in case. And I'm gonna go in this area with this lighter, 
purple. Oh, that's darker than I want. So that's another, that's another thing you might find is that you mix something on the palette and then you put it on the canvas and you're like, that's not what I thought would happen. <laughs> so um, that's totally fine, happens all the time. In my case, I want this to be lighter. So I'm just gonna grab some white. Again, holding the brush so the bristles are horizontal, giving me more control over where that paint is going. And I might put some over here. Again, just have fun. You can't go wrong if you, if you maintain that sort of back and forth horizontal motion, get really blendy. I'll take just a little pause here because I do know that I, I go fast and I'm sure there are folks out there who um, are catching up and that's totally fine. I'm looking at the original sketch here and I think my next move is gonna be these peachy pinks, peachy pinks and orange. So that's where I'm headed next. If you're wondering, when are we gonna do the black or gosh, that sky on top looks really dark, right? So we're gonna do that last. Um, it's kind of the safest um, strategic move to, to wait for the black and do it later. So we're not, um, accidentally smudging around black paint um, and getting it into the, the areas of the sky that we don't want to um, have black in it. So we'll hold off there. We will get to it. For those of you who are feeling brave and in control, then you can add that black right now. And I can yap a little bit more in case anybody needs to catch up. Again, I'm gonna to move to my peachy pink. So um, that means I definitely want to um, wash my brush, okay? I don't want any of those blues interfering with my peach. So um, good practice is grab a paper towel and I'm gonna wipe off any excess glops of paint from the brush first. And what this does is just helps me save my water, get it, um, water, water. Depending on where you are in the United States, you probably have strong feelings on the pronunciation of water, water. I get made fun of it all the time, made fun of for it. So whether you have water or water, you wanna extend the life of that cup. I'll just take off all that excess paint and give that brush a good clean rinse. Alrighty, a little tap, 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 and then I'm gonna wipe off um, any water. I want that brush to be pretty dry. Um, depending on what you like, maybe you, you paint um, regularly and you know that you like a more wet kind of look. Um, I tend to uh, try to keep my, my brush dry because if you get water on the canvas, some bad things might happen if you don't if you don't know what to expect. It can kind of clean the paint off that's already there and it can kind of just get in the way of things is what I found. But if you totally know what you're doing, then go for it with the adding water to your paint. I think I've yapped enough. I think it's time to make some peach or pink. So I'm focused on sort of this area here. Okay, and in case any of you, any of you are wondering what this blue splotch is, well, it's supposed to be this very, very faint blue splotch, but I got excited. So, and that's for anyone who's following along, like what is that doing there? Um, but again, it's not gonna look identical to the sketch and it's whatever we want it to be. So peachy pink, this is one of my favorites to do. I'm gonna grab some of this white, Smudge it in some area that's clean. 
grab a little smidgy smooch of red. Technical terms, smidgy smooch, just a little corner of red there on the brush. A little pigment goes a long way. I can always add more color. It's harder to take it away. And just a little smidgy smooch of yellow. Just on that corner there. And then you can play with this peachy pink. Maybe you don't want peach. Maybe you want pure pink. Maybe you want more red. Maybe you want more yellow. Totally up to you. I'm going to start playing around with this. I should have mentioned um, that the paint that I have um, poured out for myself here is like way more than we need. <laughs> um, but I, I haven't learned after all these years to just squirt a little bit. Um, so if you're using me as a guide, you will have paint left over if, you're, if you have that much. All right, peachy pink. I'm gonna put you right over here. And already I can tell that that looks not as vibrant as I have on the sketch. And that tells me, Oh, the, the video doesn't really do these colors justice, but um, this sketch is a much more vibrant pink. So that tells me less white. Don't use as much white next time. I'm just gonna, again, same, same deal now, holding that brush with the bristles horizontal, controlling where I want it, keeping the brush stroke, horizontal, not worrying if I start smudging or blending. It's all good. But I do want to make this a bit brighter. So I'm going to go back to my palette. I'm going to grab some more red, smidge of yellow, smidge of white. Ooh, that's going to be really intense and I have to grab some white. All right, let's give it a roll. Why not? Boom. Oh, I like that. I like that much better. And it looks like I'm gonna bring that all the way across here. Blend it into some of that blue, why not? And I'm getting that sketchy um, textural thing happening. That's because um, I just need more paint here. You know what I didn't check? When, how long do we have this event? When, when do we all get kicked off? <laughs> we won't get kicked off, Jackie, don't worry. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, we, just... we, we scheduled two hours, so okay. uh, we were hoping to be done by nine. I know sometimes it's faster and sometimes it's slower. So. Right, 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 exactly, exactly. So we'll probably finish before nine. Okay, great. That's what I'm guessing. Um, oh yeah, I'm, I'm now remembering the, I forget which one it was, maybe it was the cat, where it was like, this is not enough time. <laughs> it was, it was the um, Halloween theme. Yeah, <laughs> it felt so bad. All right, so yeah, we have plenty of time. Um, what I'm doing now is I'm looking at my sketch here, and I'm going to knock into my tripod. Um, I'm looking at my sketch, and I like how I have more of this purple than I actually gave myself. So I'm going to go back and get some more of that purple going. So please feel free to kind of, you know, make, make those decisions like, hey, you know what, I, wanna, I want this color uh, more prominently featured. I'm going to make some more of that. Let's see if I can get this color back. That's got a bit more blue in it. Something like that. We'll see what happens. 
Oh, not bad. Maybe just a little bit more blue is needed. So I'm gonna bring that down here. Something like that. All right. Cool. And I think we're headed into more of a yellowy orange as we're moving our way down here. So now we're kind of headed into more warm, warm, warm tone territory with some yellows, some streaks of red, some pink, right? So my next move, because it's, we're changing colors, um, I do wanna clean my brush again. You can futz around with this all day long. So I'm gonna wash my brush, get my paper towel, wipe off any excess paint, give my brush a good clean rinse. So um, a question that might be coming up is, you know, how far are we going down? Um, well, if, if you feel like it would be helpful, you can just go all the way down with our sky colors. Um, I'm going to kind of stop with the pink, knowing that I'm going to be covering up the bottom with black, right? So um, all that to say, um, bring down your sky as low as you want. Just be aware that um, it's going to get covered up with black at the bottom. So don't get too, you know, married or in love with um, the color down here because it will be covered. And then also, um, you don't want to stop the sky too short. Um, I often see people stop too short and then they do their work at the bottom, forgetting to close the gap and they'll have sort of white spaces. So just keep in mind that we want that, that silhouette to go right on top of that sky. We don't want any of those um, white gaps of the canvas to shine through, to show through. All right, oh, I just need to dry my brush here. It's nice and clean. All righty. I hope it's going well out there, guys. I think um, we've got like hundreds of folks tuning in, so that's really cool. Um, I, I'm sad that I can't see you um, in your living rooms or your kitchens, um, but I hope it's all going well out there. Uh, and I can't wait to see uh, the tagged photos online. So please do um, share your photo and tag the um, Alumni Association. I'm sure they'll, they'll say it again what the, the tag is. Because so I'd love to see all the finished products. All right, I've got my clean brush and I'm gonna start working on some of this yellow. And this is where it gets exciting because it's like super, super sunset coming at you right now. So I'm gonna start with um, I'm gonna start with pure yellow. Um, just because yellow is so light, it's pretty forgiving. So we can always lighten it up with more white, but um, I feel pretty safe just starting with straight up yellow on my brush here. So just like that. And um, I'm gonna hold my brush so the, the bristles are vertical because I do wanna kind of cover a bunch of space quickly. Don't worry if you smear into some blue. That blue probably is dry at this point. If not, no big deal. And um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna tend to the uh, border between our yellow and pink or our yellow and blue, yellow and purple. We're gonna tend to that in a bit. So don't, don't worry about this like harsh transition between the yellow and the blue and everything else that we've done thus far. So we will take care of that. So don't worry about this sort of harsh transition between, you know, purple and yellow or blue and yellow. 
So yeah, I guess my my yellow band is pretty pretty wide comparatively. Um, again, I'm not I've not gone all the way down. I don't know what would you say. It's like a quarter of the canvas is left, maybe a little less. All right, so I'm just gonna play with that there. Um, I do want to get moving rather quickly once I have my yellow band down there because I want to start blending this transition. And I'm going to do that with some pinky peach. So I'm going to grab that spot on my palette again where I did my pinky peach, grab some red, a little bit of white. And because that yellow should remain um, wet, I can start blending. And now I'm holding my brush with the bristles horizontal. Again, I have more control. And I can, I can blend to a really soft transition, or I can get really streaky and kind of lay on, lay on that color. Um, that's totally up to you. And I'm going to hit up this other transition here so I don't have this kind of harsh purple and then yellow situation. I might grab some more of my peachy pink color from my palette. I might add a little bit more white too. And I'm just going to ride right along that transition. And that's going to help blend between those two things. And you can do this in any, any transition that you have, like this blue and, and yellow. It's gonna feel weird because you're like, I think I'm gonna make green. Um, don't, don't worry about it. If you look at the, it might not show up on the video, but if you look closely at my sketch, things get a little muddy um, and greenish, but it's, it's still fine. If you have a major green issue <laughs> um, that you're like, yeah, I, I need to take care of that. <laughs> then um, what I recommend, and this is for any, any issue that you think like there's, there's no saving this. Um, the best thing to do with the acrylic paint is just to wait for it to dry and then, and then go over it. Um, it's better to let it dry and then, and then approach it later um, if you start playing with it now, um, it's wet and you might smudge and you might enter a rabbit hole <laughs> where you're just kind of fixing things over and over again. So just, just let it go. Ain't no big deal. Just a painting. Um, so I'm going to, what was I doing? I lost my train of thought. I'm going to right work on this, this transition down here. Sometimes you just need to walk away from a painting. And I say that knowing I need to take my own advice. So just working on that blue transition and um, play with different, what am I trying to say? Play with different uh, pressure on your brush, right? A really light stroke, versus a heavy stroke. Just gonna kinda, and now as I'm talking, I'm just, I can't help myself. I'm liking this color and I'm just kind of playing with it in other areas. Again, really forgiving painting. It's gonna be neat to have color wherever kind of you want it here. I'm kind of digging that. that yellow color here. All right. Cool. I think I have one more trick for this sky before we do the black part. Um, so there is down below, here we are, um, down below in the original sketch, we've got um, more more than yellow, orange, it's getting kind of rosy. 
rosy pink down here. So I do want to add that down below because that just kind of looks really warm and pretty um, through those trees. Ooh, knocked over the old tripod. Let me fix that. Oh, thank God there's some flowers back there. It's not like dirty dishes. All right, there we go. All righty. So um, peachy pink or rosy pink is my next move. Um, I'm gonna again, wipe off any excess paint. And as I'm doing that, I will um, remind anybody who has painted with me before and tell any new people for the first time, I promise you, your painting is going to look so good when you're done and especially tomorrow. Um, when you're painting it and you're in it, you're seeing all the things you hate about it. You're seeing all your mistakes, you know, your supposed mistakes, right? Um, and then, I don't know, it's kind of magical. You go to sleep and you see it the next day and you're like, oh, hey, <laughs> I made that. That's pretty good. So you just kind of need to step away and then kind of view it as a whole instead of a collection of all the things you think you did wrong. All right, I think I've done enough yapping. Um, again, I cleaned my brush. Um, and I'm gonna go in and work on some rosy pink to finish out the bottom of our sunset sky. That's this kind of strip right here. And let's see, let's see what we come up with. So I think I'll, I'll work in my peachy pink area too, but I'm just gonna use more red. I really want that kind of pinky color. Red and some white. Grab some white. I don't think that's what I want. It might be too pale. Let's see what happens. And start adding you in. I think that'll work. If you're looking at your painting and you're like, wow, mine's like really stripy compared to hers. It's really stripy. My lines are like too straight. What do I do? Try, try changing your, your brush stroke so that it's a bit more um, rocky, like rocking back and forth, okay? Um, instead of like a straight back and forth. And that's only if you don't want, you know, something that's really stripey. Maybe you want the stripey look, that's, that could totally work. Um, but to get it a bit um, softer and kind of looking like clouds as you see them through a sunset, that'll help get you that more sort of natural look instead of stripes. Just to, just to be safe, I'm gonna go pretty far down. Yeah, I think that, that'll do. That's fun. Oh, I can't wait to see these. Can't wait to see these all when you're done. And the problem with this is that you can just kind of play with this all day. <laughs> so I'm gonna take my own advice and just try to walk away. All righty. Sweet. I'm gonna pause here and do some yapping in case anybody needs to catch up. Um, if you are catching up, what I just did again was mix a peachy, rosy pink to finish off the bottom of our sunset. Um, I've tried to do some blending in with the yellow here. And then I started playing around and revisiting some other areas on the canvas just because I can't help myself. So that's where we're at. I've left a little strip of white 
because I know that's going to get covered up with black. So didn't even bother. Um, I'm going to wash my brush. I don't really have excess gloss of paint, but I'll give it a quick little wipe just in case. And I'm going to wash my brush nice and clean. And our next step is going to be to start um, adding some black. Okay. Um, and we're going to uh, loosen up to the idea. We're going to warm up to the idea of using black by starting at the bottom. Um, we are going to add um, some black at the top. If that terrifies you, then you don't, you don't have to do it. Um, but I do kind of love this, this look, which by the way, I forgot if I mentioned it or not for everyone. Um, this was inspired by a photo that I just found on a Google image search. Um, it was a photo that was taken. And so I just tried to uh, do my best to imitate this gorgeous sunset. And then I thought adding dear old state here to make it look like a postcard would be kind of fun. So the reason that's so dark up there is because the photo I was looking at, it was quite dark. So you don't have to add that black at the top. I do kind of like it. I think it kind of frames the painting really nicely. Um, totally forgot what I was gonna say. Blah, 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 blah. Um, oh, right. So yeah, if you're sitting looking at your painting and you're like, I'm loving my sky right now. I don't wanna put black on it. Then that's totally fine too. All right, I'm gonna wash my brush. I wiped off all my glops. And I'm giving a nice clean rinse in my cup here. All right. Are there any questions? Oh, I'm so worried that like you guys can't hear me and there have been questions and I haven't been hearing them. Nope, no questions. I think everybody's <laughs> just painting away. Okay, okay, good. Good, good, good. Everybody's focused. Yeah, but if anybody has questions, you can use the chat or the Q&A box. Um, but otherwise, I think we're good to go. Okay, good. Sometimes, you know, you get nervous when there's silence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All righty. Okay, so I've got my brush nice and clean. And again, we're going to warm up to the idea of putting black paint on our gorgeous sunset um, by starting, starting at the bottom here. Okay. Um, and we're not, we're actually, we're going to kind of be going back and forth from the bottom to the top. So we're going to warm up to using black by kind of getting our foliage line down. Oops, there I am. Getting our foliage line down here. Um, we're going to save uh, Old Main. Um, for after working on the sky, okay? So if you're someone who needs to know the order of things, <laughs> we're gonna work on this foliage line down here first, then visit the sky at the top, and then we'll, we'll work on Old Main. Ready? So that's kind of the plan. I've got my big brush. I'll be using my big brush for this, okay? And you'll see why. Um, I'm using my big brush. It's nice and clean and dry. And I'm just going to dip into a little bit of the black paint, but I'm going to use all my bristles here. I'm not dipping into, a, oh, you can't see that. I'm not dipping into a corner. I'm going with all the bristle tips in the, in the paint. Not too much. I can start out with a little. Again, easier to add paint, harder to take it away. So I'm going to start with the, what I'm calling the foliage line, um, meaning I just want to put a black band down here just to kind of get myself organized. I'm not worried about the treetops and their details just yet, but I do want a solid um, base, let's say. Um, so, I mean, in all honesty, just to make our lives easier, let's just paint a stripe down here. I'm just going to paint a black stripe covering up. Basically, let's just cover up all this white. 
Yeah, let's do that. This, this ensures that I've got all the white canvas covered now and I can work on foliage that uh, looks, looks more realistic, that it's not just kind of creeping off the bottom. We've got a nice kind of base happening here. Okay, and it doesn't have to be a sharp, perfect line either. So that is that. Now wait a little moment here. Actually, we're going to pause right here for just a couple of minutes and I will be right back. So please just continue um, with wherever you're at and we'll be back in um, a minute or two. Alrighty, we are back. I hope everything is going well. Um, if you're catching up again, we just added that bottom strip of black down there just to get ourselves organized. And hopefully now we're feeling good and confident with this black paint. And now I'm gonna start working on the um, dark sky at the top there. Now, a little goes a long way with black paint. We can always, always add more. It's gonna be really hard to take it away. So I would recommend, um, I still have that black paint on my brush. Um, a good tip is to wipe off any blocks of paint that you have still there and use a very, very gentle amount of pressure at the top to see what happens. Okay, because if you do just a little kind of uh, uh, gentle streak across the top here, we can always go over it with blue when it's that little amount of paint. Okay, so with that very, very gentle, um, I'm not going to be so gentle because I kind of know what I'm going for, but um, move that, that brush back and forth. Sometimes the streaky look in this case is going to um, work for us because we're just going to be putting very, very little amounts of black. And this is going to help us achieve these um, silhouetted clouds at the um, top of the sky here. All right. And I'm going to move 
to my um, method of holding my brush with the bristles horizontal and rocking back and forth. Again, I like this dark black look, so I'm going to make sure my top edge is nice and covered. And a good, a good um, tip to play it safe here, if this like totally freaks you out, is to start with blue and add a little smidgy of black to it, just so you get like a dark blue and kind of do the same thing. That might be um, less intimidating. I'm just gonna kind of start slowly bringing these very sketchy, very little paint on the brush sort of um, brush strokes here. I think, in my opinion, this is when it really starts to look pretty cool. Because now we're gonna get this nice, um, if we could talk art, art and composition for a moment here, we get this sort of nice framing of the dark at the top and the dark at the bottom, which I kind of dig. I might grab some more and don't, don't be nervous. Don't stress. This especially is one of those things where tomorrow you're going to be like, Hey, that's, that's pretty good. But right now you're like, what am I doing? <laughs> what am I doing to my beautiful sunset? Okay. So don't, don't panic. Something like that, that's pretty good. Um, again, you can kind of play around with maybe adding some blue to the black that you've got. So for example, um, I've got the black already on my brush here, tap into a little blue and see what happens. This enables me to get a little bit more blendy. I can create more of a smooth transition here. So yeah, have fun, have fun with this uh, black paint here. And don't, don't worry. Don't paint with panic. Again, I'm just using a very, very light, gentle pressure with my brush stroke here. And I can get kind of some fun things happening as I get lower here in the sky. Jackie, we do have a couple of questions coming through about um, if the session will be recorded. Um, so for everybody that's tuning in through the We Are Weekend website, the virtual attendee hub, the event is going to be recorded and you can access it uh, the same way that you just came into the, to the live event. It'll be available later this evening and you can go into your session and watch the replay. Excellent. Yeah, so feel free to go back kind of, I'm sure you'll be able to, you know, scroll through parts that you might want to revisit. All right, I'll take um, a little moment here and try to yap a lot in case anybody is, is catching up. I will let you know that the next, our next move here is going to be um, Old Main Tower, okay? And for that, I advise moving to a smaller brush, okay? And, um, for that, we're actually going to work our way from the top to the bottom of the tower. And the reason why we want to start at the top is we want to absolutely have control over where the tower is in the composition of the painting. If we start from the bottom, we might start building and you're like, wow, I have no room <laughs> left to finish my tower. 
or wow, I made it too, too short. If we start at the top in the middle of the sky, we know exactly where we need to go and, and finish the tower. Okay, it just gives us a little bit more control. All right, so what I will do is wash my big brush just so I don't get that um, black paint drying on there. Uh, I may go back to the big brush for the um, foliage, Foil foliage, foliage, not foliage. Oh my gosh. Um, a friend of mine <laughs> said foliage one day and I made fun of him for it. And now I can't think about that word without saying it wrong. Okay, foliage, foliage. Um, I might use the big brush for the foliage later, but I still do want to uh, keep a clean brush. So yeah, if any of you guys are working with acrylics for the first time, um, they will come out of clothes if you hit it with water really, really quick before it dries. If you do see um, dried acrylic paint on your clothing or if you're like me in your hair, um, alcohol, rubbing alcohol will take that out. Um, so if you have those like um, medical prep alcohol pads um, or just, you know, bottle of rubbing alcohol, that will, that will take out anything that has dried onto your hair or your clothing. Um, so that's a fun fact. Uh, I put my, my big brush away. I'm gonna move to my um, little brush, okay? And I'm gonna start uh, working on the old main tower, All right? So, we're gonna start with technical terms here, people, the tippity top, okay? And we've got, we're just gonna break this down into, into shapes um, and, and little steps, okay? Um, I wish I knew more architectural terms. All I know is like cupola. Um, so we're gonna be using words that I know how to use, which don't include foliage. foliage. Okay, so the tippity top of that of that tower. It's just like a little pointy thing. I don't know, just a little line, right? And that's gonna be our first move and that's gonna dictate where this, this tower is. In terms of composition, where is this thing? It is, you know, obviously towards the right of the canvas, right? And the tippity top of that tower is well past the midway point. So if I hold my brush here on the midway point, we're going to see the tippity top of Old Main um, coming past that halfway point. So if, if that's helpful to kind of like imagine where your midway point is here across your canvas, that's the midway point. I want this tippity top to be um, above that midway point. So I'm gonna say, here's my middle and the tippity top of the tower is going to, I say, go right here. So I'm just gonna place that very small line. I'll make it bigger so you can actually see it. Okay, something like that. Oh, another word just came to campanile. Campanile, is that where the actual bell is? I don't know. Okay, so that line is there. Now there's no turning back. That is where my tower is going to be. Next move is gonna be this um, small dome. So at the top here, there's a smallish dome. Okay, and then we have a bigger dome down here. Okay, um, but first the smaller dome. And I'm holding the brush kind of like I would hold a pen, right? And that is my small dome. And don't, 
I know that there's, there's going to be like dozens of perfectionists out there. Don't, don't fret too much over perfection here. Okay. Otherwise you're going to be here all night, but you can see that I don't have a perfect little dome here, right? He's kind of lopsided, but people are going to get the idea. Okay. And then from that dome, we have, whoops, that's not helpful. From that dome, we have uh, like a mini tower sitting on top of that bigger dome. So like a mini tower. So I do wanna see the edges of that, that dome. So my little mini tower is not gonna go um, completely to the edges there. And this mini tower, I would say is about twice the length of the little um, pointy thing at the top. Again, this little mini tower is about twice the length of that little thing at the top. All right, then at the base of that, we have another dome that's bigger than the first one. And let's see, how, how tall is that dome? That dome is pretty much the um, height of the um, cylinder there. Forget what I'm calling it. So something like that. <clears throat> All right. So again, to recap, we started with a little um, pointy thing at the top here. It was a little past midway across our canvas. That little pointy thing sits on a little dome or a half circle. That might have been helpful to say. Um, a little half circle that sits on a post, which sits on a larger half circle. That um, post tower thing is um, about twice the length of the little thing. And this uh, larger half circle or dome or half an oval is about the same height as that um, post tower thing. You can bring this up closer. All right, so that half circle, that larger half circle, now sits on um, a line, okay? That, that half circle sits on a horizontal line or really a really, really thin rectangle, right? So that's, that's gonna be my next move. Putting this half circle on a really, really thin rectangle or line. If it's helpful, you might want to bring up um, a silhouette of Old Main on your phone. Um, if that's easier to reference than um, my instructions. And knowing me, I probably took some, some shortcuts in painting um, Old Main because I tend to do that when I'm doing architecture because it's really complicated. So if you, if you um, want a really you know, true representation of Old Main, then do, do go ahead and bring up um, a picture on your phone or whatever you've got nearby. Um, if you really want to stay true to, you know, um, what would I say? Proportions, proportions and shapes and things like that. 
All right. It's slowly but surely coming along. Now we've got two vertical lines that come out of that horizontal line. And this little window, okay, technically should be a little bit curved at the top. Again, if I bring this up super close, this is just a sketch. So not, not perfect, but this little window should be rounded at the top. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to work on pulling those two lines at the sides down. All right. And to keep things proportional, these two lines are about the same length from um, half circle to half circle. Okay. Again, so these two lines are gonna be about the same length as the base of the half circle here and the top of the half circle there. That's kind of my guide in terms of how long these things are gonna be. All right, let's, let's do it. Here's my first one. Let's see, that one is about that. Right there. Yep, that kind of works. And then this guy over here. All right. And then I'm gonna thicken these up a bit. Whoop. And then curve that out in the middle. Apparently I can't talk and do this at the same time. So bear with me. Something like that. Let me bring that up closer. All right, we're getting there. Again, those, those two lines that form the little arch window there, those lines are about as long as the two half circles are from here to here. Whoops, from here to here. That, these are all approximate, right? So if it's a little different, that's totally fine. All right. All right, team. Let's go, team. Here we go. Next move another horizontal, um, thin rectangle that these two legs sit on. But this one is thicker than the one that we did up here, and it's also wider. Okay. So now I'm going to put in a thicker, wider, um, rectangle, horizontal rectangle for this thing to sit on. There, something like that. All right, I'm gonna start playing around and I really shouldn't. I think I want this window to be thinner. Oh, now I've gone and done it. 
Exhibit A for why you should just walk away. All right, I'll deal with you later. All right, I can bring this up closer. Just a moment. All right. So that's what we're working on now. We got that horizontal line that's thicker and wider than the first one that we did. I think I want to make it thicker. I think I do. I have not given myself an easy job here because I'm using I'm using my brush that I use all the time, and it's just a little bit too loved. It's a little bit scruffy. So not doing myself any favors here. <coughs> Okie dokie. Now we get to um, this larger, it's almost like a square, but it's, it's still a rectangle so that that horizontal piece will sit on. Okay, so that's what's coming next. All right, step by step, we are getting there. Now you might be thinking, wow, this tower looks like it's floating in the middle of the sky. What is happening? Well, we're gonna be bringing up our black and other foliage. Um, we're gonna meet up with our um, tower here. So don't worry if, if you're looking like really high in the sky right now, we're gonna bring up our foliage to meet it wherever we need to meet it. Okay. And now for the base here. Okay, and I can already see that my sketch, the tower is definitely sitting lower um, on the canvas. So that my, my tower here on the big canvas is, um, is sitting higher. So I'm going to have to bring up um, my foliage much higher and that's totally fine. Okay. Um, so the next step would be another thick horizontal move. <clears throat> All right. So now what we're going to do, and you can use the small brush if that is going to um, make you feel better, um, but I'm going to meet up with this tower with um, black paint and my big brush. Okay. And here's where you kind of got to let the spirit move you. <laughs> um, there's really no wrong way to go about this. But what I do want to do is I want to meet up to the tower and make sure that I've covered enough um, below that I'm not, um, I don't have to paint old name building itself, right? that I'm giving myself enough coverage with the tree line that I don't have to worry about old main building. It's just the tower that's peeking out above the trees. So I'm gonna go kind of pretty, pretty hard here. And I'm just gonna go right up to the top and find 
a tree line. And um, so I'm actually covering quite a bit of my pink and that kind of upsets me, but I'm gonna dip down over here so I can see it. All right, so <laughs> da -da -da, that was a really quick um, tree line. <clears throat> so do, do um, note that this line that you're going to do is going to get filled with black, meaning we're going to take time to do the smaller um, leaves and foliage to get the sunset to peek through. Okay. All right. Does that make sense? I'll say that again. So this tree line that I just put in super quick is going to get full of black. Okay. And then on top of that, we're going to start working with some smaller details of black to show that the sunset is shining through. But in other words, down here, the leaves and trees are so thick that it's just straight black. Okay, so right now it's going to look like um, a little tower sitting on a hillside, right? It's going to look like hills or mountains right now. <clears throat> but that will change. So just kind of figure out where you want your tree line to be. Um, I really wanted this pink because I like it a lot. So I, I dipped my tree line down here so I can see that pink still. Okay. Um, but again, this is this is our dense um, foliage. These are the where the leaves are really dense that we're not seeing the sunset through them. We will work on um, the other leaves and foliage uh, in a moment. But I'll sit I'll sit tight for a moment in case anyone is catching up. And in case anyone is wondering or in case anyone noticed, I don't know if you can see it on the video, but we do go over some of our um, leaves and foliage with green on top of the black. I know that that might seem kind of weird, but because of this sunset is really kind of striking and shining through that it does light up some of these leaves so we can see that they're green. So that's, that's also coming in case anybody noticed or in case you were wondering about that. Don't get too um, fussy about a perfect smooth line here. We want this to look organic. We want it to look natural, okay? Um, and actually to do that, so if you're if you're done, you filled in your tree line here. We're going to lift the tree line with some more organic, natural looking splotches. Here, I totally recommend um, playing around with any brush that you have at your disposal, and just start um, if you've got a paper plate, that's really helpful, or even a paper towel, piece of paper. And start um, start playing around with you know different ways of holding the brush and kind of just tapping it um, and just kind of figuring out like how can I how can I make these um, leaves kind of look fun and I like kind of you can press your um, <clears throat> brush on the corner so if you have an angled brush um, or a flat brush. You can see what tapping it on the corner looks like. You can rotate your brush around as you tap, see what happens. Or maybe you've got a smaller brush. Smaller brush can you know, do other, other shapes happen when you tap it, okay? So have fun, but try it out first on a on piece of paper, piece of scrap paper, and see, see what you like. The name of the game is to try to make it 
a nice transition from the solid black up to up to the the um, what would you say um, not as heavy vegetation, a lighter vegetation at the top. I think I'm going to use my small brush first. See what happens, and I'm just going to kind of tap around. I've I've honestly got no plan. I mean, I'm trying to. Um, look at the sketch that I have here as a guide, um, but just kind of imagine these are treetops, right? So what, what do your treetops look like? You might have different humps, basically. If you think about what a tree would look like, and I just wanna get finer and finer um, to get more, more of this sunset shining through these leaves. And again, I kind of want to get, you know, keep it thick down at the bottom and get more and more sparse going up to the top. And as you work through this, if you're like, wow, it just looks like my hills have, you know, freckles sitting on top of them. That probably means that you need to work on more of a transition from the straight black into the more um, stippled vegetation, the more um, holes through the leaves here. And that's gonna help, again, that transition from thicker, like straight black into a more even transition up into the, um, what would you say, the crown of these trees. That's gonna help it look like a tree line and not, you know, hills with spots. And again, don't stress, have fun. This is fun. Look at us. It's a, I don't even know what day it is. It's a Wednesday night and we're all joining in across the country. This is super fun. It's looking great, Jackie. I can't wait to see everybody's um, on, on social media. So please do when we're all done here today, please do share on social media. I love, love, love seeing um, people's work. It's, it's one of the, pretty much the main reason why I do this is I love seeing people create art. So please do um, tag. All righty. I've worked on my trees here and we've got two things left this evening. The first thing is um, dressing these, these trees with some green, some green touches, okay? And it's gonna feel really weird putting color on top of black. I promise you it works, um, it looks really cool. Um, so, e and this is going to work even with the black paint still wet. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to still use my, my small brush, but now I'm going to um, uh, wipe it clean, wipe off any excess blocks of paint here. And, oh, I'm going to rip my brush right off the handle. <laughs> There's RIP brush in my red paint. All right, I'm just gonna grab that bad boy, wipe it off and stick it right back on. Yeah, I was just telling you that this brush has, I should probably retire this really, poor guy. All right, I'll just stick that sucker right back on. And 
give them a bath. <clears throat> Again, I'll say it a million times. This painting, I promise you, looks good. Whenever you do a nice colored background and put a silhouette on top, I promise you it looks good. And tomorrow it's gonna look even better. All right, I cleaned off my poor little brush here. And now I'm going to mix a green because I don't have green, I just have blue and yellow. So I'm gonna mix up my green here, grab some blue, grab some yellow, smudge it around on my plate. And I'm gonna play around with different, different levels of green, meaning having a green that has a bit more blue in it, green that has a bit more yellow in it. And I'm getting it nice and gloppy on my brush, meaning I have a lot of paint on my brush because I am putting color on top of black. So I want that to shine through and I'm probably gonna pick up some black pigment along the way. So I just wanna make sure I've got quite a bit of that, that green going on here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna revisit some of my leaves and give them a little touch of this green to indicate that, you know what, the sunset is shining through and it's lighting things up a bit. So I'm just going to pick a spot to start and kind of just give a little, give some love to some of these trees. Again, I'm not covering all of the black. I'm just giving a little, little touches here and there indicating that this light is shining through. And this is a part that I know I go super fast in. I just, I can't help myself because this is like, this is where it becomes like therapy. Like I'm just tapping, <laughs> I'm just tapping a brush on a canvas. This is relaxing for me, this part. All right. And um, you may notice that as, as I'm getting closer to the bottom, I'm, I'm avoiding putting green down there. I'm kind of keeping that bottom really dark. Um, why? Well, because it makes sense. The light wouldn't be getting through those denser leaves. Um, but I also kind of like, um, I think it keeps it more interesting that it gets darker as you go down. You might need to refresh your brush as you've started to pick up some of that black paint. All right, something like that. All right, I will pause right there. I'm gonna wash my brush. I will definitely retire that one because that brush is not gonna be helpful for me at all in um, writing out dear old state. 
Um, ooh, I do need to wash my big brush so I can kill time by washing my big old brush. <clears throat> All right, I hope it's going well out there. Again, can't wait to see these. They're gorgeous, I just know it. Just know it. Even if you don't, even if you don't believe me, I know it. Um, all right, folks, so the last little detail here, and for me, this is, this kind of makes it look like one of those old fashioned postcards. Um, just writing out in script, Dear old state, um, I might need to wait a moment before doing that because I think my black paint is still wet. Um, if you have a liner brush, great. If not, that's totally fine. Um, I've seen people do amazing things with, with brushes and, and writing. Um, that's something that I would definitely practice first on a paper plate or a piece of paper to kind of get a feel for it. When you um, are writing, especially very small lettering um, with uh, acrylic paint, here's where I would recommend adding some water, adding a little bit of water to that pigment to get it to be kind of an inky consistency, kind of like heavy cream um, is what it's going to look like if you're using um, uh, the, the white paint. Um, so yeah, I, I would recommend practicing the writing first. I would definitely recommend waiting for that, that um, black area to dry. Um, we'll see um, if I can kind of wave my hand at it because um, I do want to show it and if anybody wants to, wants to see. Um, also, I think I mentioned this at the beginning, if you don't have a brush that you think you can handle it um, in terms of writing in cursive. Uh, you can get one of those like paint craft pens. Those work really nice. Um, even I know Sharpies now have like metallics. Um, those would look kind of cool if you had like a metallic um, gold or silver um, that would work well on top of the black. Um, or, you know, maybe you want a larger larger writing and you feel good about using a brush that you have, totally up to you. Or maybe you don't even want to write dear old state, or maybe you want to write something else. What I do recommend with any time, anytime we do words, please practice and please take your time because it's really easy to make spelling mistakes um, on paintings uh, because we get kind of like a little too focused on like what we're doing and not the big picture stuff. So please, please uh, take your time and uh, make sure you don't, you don't spell anything wrong. Um, some of you might have been around a few years ago when we did the in-person version of this event and it was um, a painting that said Happy Valley on it. And we had some spelling errors with Valley, if I, if I remember, so. Anytime you put words on a painting, just, just take it, take it nice and slow. All right, let's see how I'm doing over here. Uh, I'm not bone dry, but I think I can make this work. Okay, so I'm using a liner brush, meaning it looks like this. Oh, don't look at my awful um, calloused hands. Um, <laughs> this is um, a liner brush. It's really thin and it has a uh, pretty um, long strands here. Now it looks kind of like fanned out, like it wouldn't be um, thin, but once you wet it, you can get it to, to be quite thin. So I'm going to dip, dip that into some water. And actually it doesn't really matter if the water is clean or not. It still works. So I'm just going to I want to grab this water and show you if I can. 
the consistency of a nice inky paint. So it's really, really wet. And of course, it's a white paper plate, so you might not be seeing this at all. But that's kind of what it looks like. It's kind of like heavy cream. All right. So I'm going to load that up on my liner brush. If you have a flat brush, a small flat brush or an angled brush, you could probably get it to work um, with, with your writing here. All right, let's see if I can do this. I'm not used to writing um, straight up vertically like this. Let's see. Here we go, dear old state. There's a D. Jackie, I'm holding my breath. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you, you and me both. <laughs> you have watch me nervous. Make, watch me make a spelling mistake. That would be great. <laughs> All right, here we go. There's our D, and here comes the E. A. I'm seriously checking to make sure I'm getting the spelling right here. Jackie, we have a great question from um, sure. Sanjeev. They're curious, what setup are you using? Do you have a GoPro camera or how are you, um, what's your setup like so that we have this great shot of your canvas straight on? Um, I have a, um, I call it a tripod. It's not a tripod, but I bought it as a, what, what was it called? like a, a video blog kit that I got at um, Best Buy. And it's a, it's a adjustable, uh, it's not a tripod because it's just one pole and a, and a heavy base. Um, and what it has on it is um, this sort of rack. And I just set my iPhone in here. So I have my iPhone kind of clipped in and nice. horizontal view, you know, it's, physically in there horizontally. Um, so that, that's worked fairly well. It's Great. A, a cheapo little thing that I got from Best Buy, but it's, it's it works. <laughs> and right here comes the R. Old, that starts with an O, here we go. Here. And we got an L. I don't think I've ever had almost 500 people watch me do anything. So this, this is pretty intense right now. Dear old, and then state gets a big old capital S. And um, you might find, especially because we're we're writing on top of black here, that you might want to go over your lettering a second time with the white. Don't worry, I will cross my T's at the end. Oh. <laughs> Duh. Yeah, so I probably want to go over some of these areas where it's um, not as clear white or clean white. So yeah, if anybody else out there is a teacher of any kind, um, 
I imagine you could set up, you know, a whiteboard or a blackboard this way. Um, just with your iPhone. And then I have my laptop also here on the side, which um, has the better audio, which is why I have the double setup. All right, I think I might walk away from that one <laughs> because um, I can definitely start playing around with the lettering, trying to make it more clean white there. All right, so um, I will hang around for a minute or so. I know people are probably catching up, still working. Um, that's fine. I, I want to hang out in case there are questions, but we we can stick a fork in this one, guys. Um, I really hope you enjoyed this one, and I, I can't wait to see um, all of your finished products tagged on um, social media. And I want to thank um, the Alumni Association for, for having me back again. And it was it was a pleasure, and I, again, hope to see all of your finished products. That was so fun. Thank you, Jackie. As a reminder, we're encouraging you all to tag the Alumni Association on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram with a picture of your painting and use the hashtag PSAA Paint Night. Thank you for tuning in and please enjoy the rest of your We Are Weekend. We are Penn State. Jackie, I think we're all set. I'm not seeing any questions or anything in the chat. Excellent. So I'm gonna go ahead and close us down here. Thank you so much. And um, like Lauren said, please tag us, hashtag PSAA Paint Night. Cannot wait to see those beautiful paintings later tonight. Perfect. All righty. Thank you everybody. Good night. Bye.